Personal matters, things that my stock and play. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me. George Valentine. Right, full detail. <laughs> particular yarn puts murder on a very high plane. It's called, Is Everybody Happy? And it chiefly concerns a rich old codger named Lorenzo, who had a fetish for constantly quoting Mr. Ted Lewis's hallmark. Namely, Is Everybody Happy? Now, of course, you know that nobody was. But why this condition existed is not for me to tell, but for you to find out. Is everybody frustrated? Welcome, Mr. Stubby. How's that, Professor? <laughs> Where I come from, we say, come and get it. Ah, different, huh? <laughs> That's very good, Lorenzo. So, I'm learning. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, huh? How would that go in your pipe, Dr. Merkel? Hey, hey, what's that? Uh, no, 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 thank you. Uh, no soup for me. <laughs> Listen to that. Fill up stairs with his test tube. Me, I am ignorant. I could only invent a rose bush, make a million bucks, and smoke cigars. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lorenzo. What was uh, a was a doctor's sight. His mind, there was nothing like it. More absent than present. Stop it, stop it, you handsome, be quiet. Uh, pipe, pipe, I, I think you said something. Never mind. Oh. Is everybody happy? Now is everybody happy? Well, that's the way you feel. I go back to my garden. No, uh, no, no, of course we are, Lorenzo. You just ask it so many times, that's all. Yeah, I know, I know, excuse me. But there never was a place like this, was there? There never was. Oh, I'm not... only kidding, Lorenzo. It's the house of Lorenzo the Great. No, 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 Professor I only want you all to be happy. Besides, aren't we going to wait for that brother-in-law of yours? Uh, uh, no, no, he is unimportant. He is not scholars like you are. Fred is nothing. You don't wait for Fred. Forget him. Huh? Whatever you say. So, there you are, Lorenzo. Everybody's happy. Eh? Hmm? Let's see. No, no, oh, wait. Professor Amy. Uh, what? <laughs> I should have noticed. I ran for dinner before she finished reading her letter. <laughs> now, what kind of a letter do you suppose a professor of romance like? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, it's nothing like that. Well, she blushes. I mean, I mean, it's so fun I was writing. Oh, no, she writes to someone. Gets better and better. Into every life, a little... Oh, please, please, all of you. It's no one you know. I mean, it's just a man named George Valentine. Now, please. Everybody's happy. Let's eat. <laughs> Certainly a beautiful place, isn't it? The House of Lorenzo. It's going to be one of the most unusual places in the world. I think Lorenzo must be one of the greatest men who ever lived. Well, he made one of the greatest files of money. Oh, Mr. Valentine. I don't mean on account of that, but it is on account of that, isn't it? There are three of us here so far. Dr. Merkel, he's a research psychologist. Lorenzo's going to build him a laboratory later on. Then there's Mr. Hanson. He's a poet. A good one. And he used to have to work in an accounting office to earn a living. So you can imagine how much poetry he got written. Mm -hmm. 
How much is so? Well, I taught romance languages. But translation is always what I wanted to do. I'm working on Francois de Jong now. Everybody gets a chance to do what they want. Well, not quite everybody, Miss Brooks. Lorenzo is being very choosy about his guests. But I guess eventually there will be 30 or 40 here. Mm -hmm. Sort of a one-man Guggenheim Foundation, huh? In a way. Lorenzo says that he always had to work so hard that, except for his roses, he never had a chance to do anything he wanted. So now he's getting all of you a chance. <laughs> oh, he's a little eccentric, maybe. Is everybody happy, he always says. I know people laugh about that slogan he stole from Ted Lewis. But then, why do you want me here? Suppose Lorenzo would permanently endow me with a fresh mystery case every week? He might. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was trying to be funny. What is it you're afraid of? Fred. Who? Hmm? Fred Jeffrey. He's one of those horn wind sort of men. He's a lawyer. And Lorenzo's brother in law. Uh -huh, go on. Well, he's been here a week now. From back east, where the company is. He, he thinks Lorenzo is crazy. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, I'm beginning to get it. Always a reality, huh? And you're afraid he'll persuade Santa Claus to go back to the North Pole. Well, Lorenzo has a great deal of money. How he chooses to use it is... Well, I mean, it, it could cause unhappiness as well as happiness. Oh, no, please, don't stack the cards for me on who's right and who's wrong. I'm right, Mr. Valentine. I'll prove it to you. Crazy, he said. Crazy. Yes, that's just what he said. Dr. Merkel. You see, this Fred Jeffries came here, oh, maybe a week ago. The same day Nolan left. Left? Dr. Nolan, a loafer, no good, electronic man of some sort, but a, a, a popular, and really not so much of an authority. Well, I told you how careful Lorenzo is in picking his people to stay. Look, both of you, please. Yes, yes, we were the lucky ones. We stay. When you stay, unless Fred interferes and blows the whole idea up, right? Persuades Lorenzo not to sink his whole fortune into this place? Yes. I am a skeptic, too, Mr. Valentine. You have thought we are prejudiced. That we would persuade Lorenzo to endow us with his money. Eh? Of course we do. But we don't persuade and talk of court orders. Ah, uh, that's what do you mean? I was trying to tell you. When Nolan left, an MD moved in. Fred brought him. His job was to see if Lorenzo couldn't be committed to an asylum. Well, it would be one way to keep him from giving his money away, wouldn't it? Obviously, he found Lorenzo was no more irresponsible than And besides, uh, you scared the doctor away, I suppose. Eh? Well, you have quite an imposing list of degrees. Oh. <laughs> yes, I did introduce myself. The doctor left. I think he agreed with me that Lorenzo would never be judged insane. He persuaded Fred not to bother calling any experts. Well, kind of a nasty way to try and stop Lorenzo's little project. Well, but... Why don't you believe me, Mr. Valentine? This... Fred wouldn't stop at anything. Well, what does Lorenzo have to say about it? He's not the kind of man to talk about such things. And we are. And that makes us nasty and suspicious, I suppose. Oh, Professor Ray. But I don't care. Sometimes a woman can tell things that a man has no idea. No, 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 Amy. We're dealing with a man. So we'll stick to the facts. Uh, here. Uh, sorry, my place is such a mess. A little too much equipment for such a small room. But, uh, here in the desk, I have a letter from that doctor I spoke of. Uh, just in case you doubt what I said. No, I don't doubt it. I just don't see what it amounts to. Uh, put on the lamp there, Amy. Of course. Uh, hey. Huh? What happened? Lights, lights, that's all. Blue fumes. I've known there was too much drain on the power. Now, just stand still, everyone. I run down. Yeah. It wasn't all that happened. It sounded like a shot. Oh, the lights. Hurry, get the... Get it, will you? That was a shot. It was outside. Come on. It sounded to me like it was in this direction. Nobody there, Angel. Lorenzo! Lorenzo! Oh, no. No, he's not in the Rose Arbor. That's where he always sits. But he hasn't come out yet, I guess. Roses is a sick a man could be hiding. Not in roses, Angel. Not in those thorns. Besides, I just looked down those stairs. Oh. 
Maybe we were wrong. There's certainly nobody out here now. Dr. Merkel. <laughs> I fixed the light. Lorenzo was mad because he spilled his cigar ashes into oh, his brandy. He's all right. Of course. Oh. But he didn't hear anything. Everybody is happy. You know, Fred has been doing some shooting. Almost every day he goes out into the woods and... What's the matter, Mr. Valentine? Do you think our imaginations are running away with us, too? Uh, Professor, let me make a couple of phone calls, will you? And then let me meet this ogre, Fred. <laughs> about me. Well, I don't blame you. If you've been talking to the inmates of this squirrel cage for retired nuns. Now, just take it easy, Mr. Jeffries. I only wanted to get it straight who you were. Vice President Lawyer nursed me to an old ghost. That's what I am. Yeah, yeah, I know. And in between, you do uh, some shooting. Yeah. Smell that. Mm. Has this gun been fired in the last few hours? I work off steam shooting at squirrels, Mr. Valentine, but scarcely at night. Okay, okay. But I know what you mean. I heard that myself. Backfire, I guess. At least I ran out back and then around front and didn't see anything. All right, all right, Skipper. No, I... I don't think I will. You know I tried to railroad Lorenzo into a booby hatch. That's what you really checked on? Sure. Why not? And I find you did, but it didn't work. Correct. Mr. Valentine, I'm a practical man. To me, it's beside the point whether this throw-your-money-away son of Lorenzo's is good or bad. I have to fight it to protect the estate's interest. I'll try anything, but I'm not given to hysteria. Would you mind clearing that up? Sit down. Sit down, please. Lorenzo endows these people for life. Hasn't their interest in it occurred to you? Hasn't it? That was a shot. Out back. I'm fully for it. Come on. Oh, Darber. Take me. What's in the name of Oh, I was there with it. I couldn't see who it was. I couldn't see anything. Just somebody in the hey, dark. Amy, stop that. Get hold of yourself. The thing's so. Yeah. He's dead. Shot to death. Try to remember, but please. It startled me so that I, I couldn't notice anything. But somebody must have been standing over here by the entrance to the arbor someplace. Yes. The way Lorenzo has allowed these precious roses of his to grow over it. Why, well, a man could run down any one of these. Get away from there. Get away. What? Well, there might be footprints, mightn't there? Well, I, I don't see any. Have you searched him, Mr. Valentine? First thing quickly before he can get rid of the gun. Oh, Professor. He's been causing trouble for Lorenzo ever since he got it. Oh, Amy, stop it. I think you'd better know now that at the time of Lorenzo's death, Fred was with me. What? No. No. I don't believe. Now get hold of yourself, please. I've got work to do. I'll take her inside. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sir. <laughs> Lorenzo was such a wonderful man. Do I call the police, sir? No. No, I'll be inside and do it myself. Amy doesn't like you much, does she? No. Well, okay, I want to ask you a question, friend. About Lorenzo's endowing these people for life. What people did you mean? Amy, the female professor, Dr. Merkel, Mr. Hanson. Well, there would have been others as time went on. A good many others. But if you've been able to make him change his mind, then what? Well, it's his money. Lorenzo could have changed their trust set up, taken it away from them again, and... Oh, but now he can't. That's what you're driving at. Uh-huh. Now you're not a menace anymore, at least to these three. Yes. It's Lorenzo Dan. Their interest has been protected. Yeah. Yeah. 
We have three very fine suspects from murder. been trampling around over there for the ledger just a bit. Yeah. Look closer, Angel. Right on the table here by Lorenzo's chair. A pocket flashlight. Oh, a mirror. Pieces of wire. Copper wire. Why wouldn't you take this thing with him? Real tricky mirror, too. See? See here. Steel frame to hold it in place. Only what place? L. M. Hmm? The pocket flashlight initial. Leon Merkel. Yes. The one I saw. Sure, sure. This makes sense, all right. Careful. I almost fell over myself. Dr. Mirko, oh no. Blood on his head. Here, help me. He's dead. No? No, he's breathing, George. What? Just there. That brick there. Somebody hit him with that brick. See the blood on it? Let's lift him. 
Get him back in the house. No, no, don't touch him. Both you stay here with him. Fellas, honey, are you crazy? Whoever did this is right around us somewhere. Right here on the dock. Leave us. She'll be all right. The sheriff's car will come up that driveway in about one second. Let's start turning in now, George. What's the murder? Thank you, the roller driver. Fred, step on it. I'll get the murderer, all right. <laughs> Flashlights or lanterns? Never mind them. Their first job is taking care of Myrtle, getting him in a hospital so he'll live. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, he's torn. What are you looking for? Well, the murderer will be pretty disappointed if Myrtle dies. Or if he lives, they should say one big blow and figure he was dead. Yes, but what was Myrtle doing out here by himself? And I'll be pretty disappointed if he doesn't live. There's a real mild understatement, Fred. Don't you get it? He was running for help. What? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And here's where the mirror was. The fit, see? And just about in line with Lorenzo, where he was shot, stepping in front of his marble chair there. Look, I asked you about Merkel, not Lorenzo. Merkel had a lot of the facts, and he had to play detective. He was out here doing the same thing I am. Only the facts aren't here anymore. What facts for heaven? Well, listen. This is the police out in front, wasn't it? No. It was right close by. Now, you listen, Fred. Merkel noticed the same thing I did, that first shot. What? Sure, that's what I'm looking for on the chair here. There ought to be... Yeah, here we are. The splendid place. You mean that first shot was fired here in the same place? Yeah, that's that way. The bullet that is still in Lorenzo couldn't have done that. And over here, there ought to be... Uh-huh. Here's something. Huh? What is it? Hey. Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine. Amy. Oh, oh there you are. Yeah. The sheriff is taking care of Dr. Murphy. Yes, I know. What's that you're holding? Well, I'm not sure, Amy. A piece of black glass, a filter maybe, or is it red? What? Huh? Yeah, sure. It'd have to be an infrared light, or you'd have seen it, wouldn't you? Mr. Valentine, what on earth? I didn't see anything. I told you I but didn't... But there's another possibility. That there wasn't anything to see. But, but the man who fired the hey, gun... Hey, Amy, when the gun fired that first time, it happened when you switched on the lights, and Mr. Valentine... Take it easy, both of you, will you? I'll make sense. Professor, that guy who used to be here, that uh, Dr. Nolan, who didn't make the grade and got sore at Lorenzo, he was an electronics man, wasn't he? Well, did he have any equipment? Is there any of it still around? Equipment? Yeah, like maybe a photoelectric cell. What? You heard me. A photoelectric cell can be used to do anything from opening your garage door to setting off a burglar alarm. So why couldn't it be used to fire a gun? Mr. Valentine, I just don't understand. I do. Dr. Nolan. Yeah, at least that would explain the mirror and copper wire and the black glass. And it would explain what else Merkel figured out. But a short circuit when you switch the light would have fired the first shot by accident. Anything that interferes with the beam of the cell, its current in other words, could very easily fire a gun. Magnet releasing the trigger, for instance. No, no, I don't follow you at all. And then the second time, after a reload, I guess, the gun fired when Lorenzo stepped in front of the beam. When he sat down in the same place he came to every night. Oh, but, but if you can't find the gun or that cell thing... I know where to find it. Don't worry. There's only one earthly reason for killing a person with a mechanical contraction. And that's to set up a perfect alibi. Well, don't look so blank, Fred. Sure, I know how upsetting it's all been. Merkel's still alive so he can talk. But it's a little ironic, too, isn't it? Set up a perfect alibi, Fred. And then get hung by the fact you're the only person with an alibi. <laughs> Let's go upstairs and take a look at Dr. Nolan's room, shall we? You want to bet that's where we'll find the equipment? Is your fingerprints on it? Well, Fred? Well, I see you've only got a couple of seconds. So make up your mind. Now, you and the I sheriff thought... meet me upstairs, will you? Oh, well, Fred, how about it? You coming? It would have been so different if you hadn't been here. Oh, sure, I know. Things kind of got away from you, didn't they? Mr. Valentine, look out! I suppose you might find the photoelectric cell upstairs. But I doubt if you'd find the gun. Oh, yeah. Didn't get rid of it yet, huh? No. So things kind of get away from you, too, don't they? Sure. Stand still, pussy. Hey, you! What's that? And 
that was it. I suppose Mrs. Jeffries was already so desperate after trying to get rid of Dr. Dawson. Sure, sure, but a bullet in the leg just makes him talk that much faster. You know, I thought that since Lorenzo's money was already in your name, Professor and Dr. Hanson, it was only three, Angel. If Lorenzo had enough money to figure on in dying 40 or 50, then there was plenty left for Fred to try to hang on to by killing him. But now what will happen? I don't know. But after this, I have a hunch the courts will let his endowment plan go right on through. He'll still be remembered as Lorenzo the Great, all right. Is everybody happy? It's a wonderful thing to try for, isn't it? Sure. No matter what kind of answers you get. But if you keep asking the question, oh, why not? Oh, don't be so serious, Angel. All it leads to is a song called... When my baby smiles at me. You have just heard Is Everybody Happy? Another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey will start as George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now, this is yours truly inviting you to another visit to Valentine when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it.